for our very first video in the series. We are going to start with the uh, kettlebell series and I'm going to show you how to perform a kettlebell swing. <laughs> there, I want to just throw out if you are brand new to exercising, please do not use a kettlebell, okay? Don't use a kettlebell because you do need to have a strong back and a strong core built up to uh, lower your risk of in injury. As with anything, you know, when you're lifting weights, there is a chance for injury. Um, I want to point out, as you're going through and doing these moves, first start doing something body weight. Pretend you have a weight and then start doing the move with a really, really light weight and work your way up. Do not go into these workouts immediately starting with a heavy weight, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I am using a 20 pound kettlebell for this or a nine kilo. Uh, when you're in the kettlebell word, you hear them use the kilos a lot of times. So what we're gonna do is for a kettlebell swing, we would set our kettlebell on the floor and you take two feet back from that, okay? That's where you're going to stand. Let me position y'all down a little bit more so that you can see. There, hopefully that's better. So, two feet back, and then what you wanna do is create a triangle, so let me, so your bell is the point of the triangle and then you have your two feet, okay? So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna move that back over here and raise y'all up so that you can see my full body. Now today we're doing what we call a Russian kettlebell swing. So you set up your feet and we're not picking up our bell yet. Why is there a staple? Oh my gosh, okay. Um, we're doing a Russian kettlebell, which is only going to come to chest height, not past your boobs, all the way up. I don't know, is that called an American bell? It's just a traditional kettlebell swing. We're not doing those today. So what I want you to do, in your hip crease, okay, a kettlebell swing, you hinge. You do not squat to grab your bell. You don't do this. You hinge like a deadlift and then you're going to reach for the top of your bell. Okay, so you want to grab on the, on the top of the horns right here. Now, when you are hinging, okay, if your kettlebell's too far, you can bend your knees a little bit more. Just make sure you're not doing a squat to get it. There is a difference. So, if you do like a good morning, you'll feel it in your hamstrings versus if you do a squat, you're not feeling it in your hamstrings as much, so that's one way that you can tell the difference. But what we're gonna do is you will hinge, you will reach for that kettlebell, and you're using your hips a lot, so you would pull the kettlebell back between your legs. See my hands? Hi, that's where your kettlebell's gonna be. And then you're taking an explosive breath and explosively thrusting your hips and that's gonna generate the momentum to lift the bell. So it would be like, and you're locking out your glutes. Sorry, my butt looks jiggly, it's actually tight. <laughs> you're locking out your glutes and you're basically planking once you're up here. A couple of things. In this position, you have breathed out, your core should be tight. Your shoulders are down, they're not up here. They're not raising the bell. When you have the bell, you are barely holding on to it. You're not death gripping the bell, it doesn't need you to. And then you're going to inhale, you come back down and you're driving the bell back between your legs. Okay? <laughs> so let's set up and let's try one. So go ahead and grab a light kettlebell. Place it down in front of you and take two steps behind it. Spread your feet out a little bit wider than your hips and your toes are out just slightly. Now you're going to hinge and grab onto your bell 
and you should feel it. I feel it. Now, you are dragging your bell back. And let me hold this. See? Now, one thing I want to point out that I, I caught myself just doing, because when I first started kettlebell swinging, I was tall improperly. So, when you're kettlebell swinging, when you go down, you don't want your chin to go like this. Okay, that's really, really bad on your neck. So, you want to stay with your eyes forward on the horizon, pick a spot, Keep them there. Your head should not be going down like this. That is really, really, really bad for your spine and your back. And when you are doing anything with a kettlebell, you need to keep your tort, your, your tort, your core extremely tight because of the weight of the kettlebell. If it's not tight and it's not stabilized, you'll feel it in your back. Okay. I hope you guys like.